Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we all know what these are. <laughs> I think everybody knows at this point what a real U-47 is, and these are real U-47s. But like the, I think my, uh, I, I came about these in a way that's meaningful to me, where uh, an engineer I did a number of records with, Rich Hassel, who's really great, and who ended up moving with his wife to Denmark. Um, these were his dad's. And so his dad gave them to him, pretty much unused at the time. And Rich was a real recording at the time, worked for uh, Don Smith, was Don Smith's guy. And so Rich would just kind of use them on sessions with Don. And then as he started doing things with me, he'd use them with me. And, you know, they're, they're obviously, I mean, they're amazing sounding. That's, they're great mics and these are two good ones. But like Rich, um, it meant so much to him that he had kind of rejected his dad giving him these mics for so long because his dad kept saying he had these two mics under his bed and he wanted to give them to his son since his son wanted to be a recording engineer. And the son's like, Dad, I don't need two TAC mics. You know what I mean? I don't need, I know you got some nice Radio Shack mics and everything, Dad. But you know, forget it, it was years before finally he's like at his parents' house for a holiday or something. Dad goes, I gotta get those mics out for you. I've had them under the bed, you know. It's just one of those stories. And Rich finally goes, okay, Dad, let's go get the mics. And he goes and he looks at the boxes. He goes, Dad, uh, and he opens the box. He goes, why do you have these? And the dad was like, oh, you know, I took piano lessons and got a TAC you know, reel to reel machine, I was gonna record myself doing my lessons, so I thought I'd buy a couple mics to use with my TI. And Rich is just like, okay, well, thanks, Dad. I can use these. I can, and he takes them the next day to a Don Smith session and shows Don. And Don's just like, Rich, what? And so I, I, I just think they have a great background. And when as and Rich reached a point where he wanted to sell them, and he very nicely offered them to me first. And so I wanted to keep them in the, keep them in a good music uh, atmosphere, such as it were. And so, so I did, I mean, and now I'm in a situation where I, I can't use them as much as I wished I could. And so I think somebody else should. I'm not an engineer. I mean, I really, and purposely avoid engineering uh, mind states. And so, uh, I'm trying to remember singers. I mean, mostly we'd use the 47s on singers. Because, I mean, you know, at the, by, by the time I got them, they were, and Rich was around me with them, they were so valuable, you didn't want to put them on the toms. Somebody hits them with a stick, you know. So you, it was mostly singers. And then sometimes that 47 goes on a singer, and it, it's, you know, and it's just, not heads and tails. You can line up a bunch of mics on a singer and a bunch of great vocal mics. And sometimes an Elvis Costello walks up to a mic like that and it's just, his head got twice as big. You know, it's like what he's saying got 30% truer. And it's, it, it's just it. You go, well, there, that's not even a contest. Get those other mics out of the way and see how fast you can hit record, please. You know, you're in that mode. So, I think, so in my era of being around these mics, we used them virtually always on vocals. You didn't want to give them a lot of level just because they're, they're kind of priceless, you know? You didn't want to let somebody hit them <laughs> with, their, with their signature stick. 